Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. In the last episode, as I'm sure you remember, I set up the uh, Deep Space Science production over here. So we've got these three supercomputers producing the um, producing the Deep Space Science catalogs at at the appropriate speed. So it's one every five seconds. That's that's about what I aim for with all of these things. And three three computers is enough for that. But as you can probably see, these these uh, one of these types of data. What is that type of data? Uh, let's have a look. This one, the Naquium Energy data, is is running out. It's not it's not being produced quickly enough. And I traced that back, and I discovered it was because there weren't enough machines making the data cards. There weren't enough machines filling up the canisters um, along here. So I put in some extra ones of those. But the problem is, we've, um, I had the the um, the supply of ion stream wasn't fast enough for the for the uh, for what was being for, for all of what was being done here. And so. I looked up here, and it turns out the trains were struggling to keep enough ion stream in these can in these tanks here for the for the rate it was being used up. So uh, the logical next step was to put these machines in on the bottom here, and these are turn uh, these are creating plasma stream and then turning that into ion stream, and that required a couple of extra inputs. So we've got stone coming in down here now. We already had the copper that we needed for this one, um, and we also need the um, this stuff, this orange goo, the chemical gel. And so that has then, that might be enough, I'm not really 100% sure, because I discovered then that I've got a shortage of chemical gel. And that is because over here, the machine that's making the chemical gel is, is reasonably happy, but we're not producing, we're not bringing this um, methane ice in fast enough. So as you can see, a train has arrived and is dropping it off. But basically we've got, an, we've got, we've got a shortage of chemical gel because we've got a shortage of petroleum gas because we've got a shortage of oil. And that just sort of filters back up the chain until we go, oh dear, well, it's because there's a shortage of methane ice. So that is probably probably a shortage, probably a, prob probably a problem, there's some good English, um, because this patch over here is down to 162,000 and it's coming out at a dribble. And we need this belt to be basically full in order for this to work. Now I could go out and speed module this up just to get the last few um, mining drills to, to empty, out as empty it out as quickly as possible. But I've decided that there's no point really in doing that um, because this patch is about to die and if we look, and I, I did some exploration with the uh, nav Navsat and there's basically there's, there's no more decent patches of methane ice up here in Norvis orbit. There's a tiny one here with 19,000 in it. There's 56,000 there. So there's, there's very very little. So so this whilst using this methane ice was a lovely idea and it it it, got, it produced a decent amount of oil for me. It's not going to be a suitable long-term solution. So I've decided that I'm going to head over to Asalia, that's my oily moon that's fairly close by, and it's already producing rocket fuel in large quantities for these for this system that tanks it up into these into these spaceships, flies it back, flies it around, black back over to the um, back over to where it's needed. So I'm going to put in another landing pad around here somewhere with another station, and we're just going to fill that up with oil, dump that onto a spaceship, and fly fly the crude oil up in a, in a spaceship out back out to, um, to 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 where I need it. And we can also get the uh, the rocket fuel from here to fuel the spaceship up as well. So this is going to this is going to work nicely. Um, why has this ship not gone? So we're waiting for that no this one to be at least 1.4 million. Got all this wired up properly, but these are all pretty full. It's 90. It's more than 90% full. I think maybe that 1.4 million is a little ambitious. So it's the it's the old problem of trying to get the fuel through into here and pump it and, and fill these up as much as possible, as quickly as possible. Because when you fill up one tank here, and this gets when this one's full and the one next to it is nearly full, and the one next to that is nearly full, and there's very small gradients of fuel difference capacity differences in the amount of fuel between them it means it's incredibly slow for the uh, waiting for the fuel to trickle from this one into this one into this one into this one into this one, into this one. so this pump here is only running at 189 per second that's terrible so I possibly need to need to adjust this this limit so I could set that to 1.2 million or something like that and then it'll take off a lot more quickly and there's 1 2 3 4 5 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 15 tanks in here oh there we go it's hit it's hit, it's hit stuff now anyway and it's swapped over, so the other ship has now landed and will now fill up. So now you see this this pump is running at 3,000 per second, which is a lot more acceptable. It's still nowhere near the maximum the pump can go at, but that's because I have to then squeeze it through this pipe here as well, I believe. So it's better. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was was before. Um, but then as these tanks fill up, we're going to have the same problem again. But anyway, that's a bit of a side note. Um, so what I'm going to do on here is, yes, I've got loads and loads of oil here. We've got 10,000% in that mine, 10,000% in this one. There's another mine here of 5,000 I've not touched yet, 4,000 there. Then there's a 13,000 down here. So there's loads and loads of oil on this planet. Uh, 13,000 there, not 10, almost 10,000 there. So when, I think oil, oil, on, oil on a sailor is not going to be a problem for a good long time. So we'll just keep this ticking over as it is. 
we'll put in another spaceport here to take out to take a ship full of um, rocket fuel uh, sorry oil out up to orbit and we'll land that up there um, in Norvis orbit probably in this convenient gap here we'll, so we'll land a ship here dump the oil out into the pipe pipe systems and, and, and then this can run much much faster and more effectively and we, hopefully that'll solve that problem everything and everything will be fine <laughs> maybe anyway that's just that's been a bit of a distraction so yes as i said i've got the um got these being made gradually and this is gradually petering out over here as you can see um and so that was that was the last episode this ep this 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 episode i went out and i built up this system here which is my um deep space science production facility and as you, as you can tell by these um by the fact that these are all programmed actually let's do that so we don't have problems later um we've got the um We've got this set up now to start doing deep space science. This is a direct copy of the uh, of the of the um, biological science system down here. All the belts, everything. I just copied and pasted it in here. I thought, right, this will do as a starting point. Then we can think about the the, the differences, the difficulties, the, that sort of things. So the first difficulty is um, if we look at the the, the recipe for um, deep space science packs. So where where is all of the other recipe, all of the other science packs take in um, they'll take in a, a, a an exotic material so this in the, here the equivalent is the aquia plate that's fine that's that's normal that's the same essentially they take in significant data they take in the appropriate catalog all of the other ones take in one of these science cylinders the insights that you turn you turn the catalogs into deep space science doesn't use insights so there, there's no there's no insight production going on in here instead it uses advanced neural gel so you have to pipe that in and so there's another liquid that needs to go into these into these assembly machines so i'm going to need to find a way to get that into this one which i think is probably not going to be too bad i can run a pipe up here and then a sideways pipe across here and into there i think here it's yeah here it's going to be okay i'll just move, oh no that's going to get in the way it's going to be a little bit fiddly to get it in here but i'll I'll find some way to spaghetti the pipes in. I'm sure it'll 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 be manageable, just just awkward and a bit fiddly. We'll we'll see how that goes. But um, worst case, I can always bring it in on the. F oh yeah, I could rotate this round like that, um, oop, and potentially then bring it in on the front side, or even up, or bring it up the back here and feed it in on the back of all of these machines. That would probably work. So there there'll be there where there's a will, there's a way, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to find a way to do this. Um, so that's got that's got the. Um, the this the the deep space science pack one being produced it's not being produced very quickly because there's not the naquiums coming through rather slowly so I'm going to need more of these machines to be turning the the ingots into plates but that's that's fine that's that is a thing I need to do but it's a thing I understand and can do easily enough and that means that we have um, I don't know where the belt is for it oh it's one of these is it this one yes yes so we've got occasional deep space science packs trundling out here like this. All the way along here, all the way along this belt. It's a long, long, long old belt. Down, 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 and then down here we've got the normal sort of system where we're feeding into the science sushi, sushi, science sushi stuff. So there's a couple of them. They go in here, they get passed along all the way along here, dumped into this chest, like so, and then out again immediately to come along here to go into the sushi system. And that is that is working. As you can see up here, we've managed Factory Spaceship One, and that is that required the Deep Space Science. Uh, there's an, there was another Deep Space Science one I did as well. I think it was to try and it was the Anaquium Cubes because I know I'm going to need those fairly soon. So yes, yeah, Space Science is coming along well. I could do another Spaceship Integrity. That'll give me another 500, which is great. Those two between them would allow me to make spaceships that are literally twice as big as the ones I'm making at the moment. So. The factory spaceships are much better. They're much bigger um, compared to these these ones where you only get plus a hundred each for each level. These ones you get now. I'm now getting plus five hundred. So that's a that's a big boost. Um, so the, yeah, that'll allow me to uh, start making bigger and bigger spaceships, and that will get me round the the massive headaches I've been having with my um, aquifer ships. These ones, which are pressing right up. Um, a, Ah, they were pressing right up against the limit because you 997. When it was a thousand, that was a problem. But now it's 1500. I've got loads of headroom, so I can I can I can start putting more things into the ship and fiddling with it and doing doing things with it without worrying about exactly how small I make it. It's still an inefficient space shape for a spaceship because long and thin is not is not conducive to a low hull stress level. Ideally, you want them to be short and fat, well, more or less square or more or less round, something like that. Much more sort of much more even in size, um, but. 
you know, I won't worry about that for now. It's um, this, this ship is there and is working. There's a couple of those, so that's 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 good. So yes, that's the um, the deep space science up here is, is is up and running. One of the other complexities of this is you also have when you with these science also you produce the science packs obviously because that's what you want. Um, you produce duff data cards, same as all the other ones did, but you also produce broken data cards. So in order to get that to work, I've put it, I've modified my output shoot a little bit. So we've got um, here we've got we're taking out the broken data cards and the blank data cards, and then I'm merging them onto a single belt here. They're then going down and being put into the down. Oh, they are in theory being dealt with. What's going on here? Why is this broken? Why are you why are you broken? I bet this. Um. What? That's not supposed to be fed onto the same belt here. Oh, unless... Okay, I haven't thought my cunning plan all the way through. So, yes, the um, there was a single belt here that was dealing with... Uh, where is it? This this single belt was dealing with both the um, the duff data cards and the um, and the and the clean data cards. And so, having put another thing onto there that's then polluted it and so down here what we need to do is here we need to say on the other side take out the no oh crap that was not what I wanted to do take out those and that will fix it but I need to go in and just clean up all of this mess now because this has all gone horrible so yes but once I get once, once I go in and at least I, I found the problem it's something fairly simple it's because I put extra things on there without them following the path all the way through so my theory was that because I didn't, I'd forgotten this, or I hadn't realised it was going onto here. The theory was that those would be passed all the way through here and onto the this, this disposal station down here for the duff data cards. We'd load the broken ones and the um, and the and the the ones that just need reformatting into here, um, and they and, and they would then be taken away to the reformatting area here somewhere around here. Yeah, they'd be dropped off here into these chests. And then I'd split out the ones that need formatting to go down here to be formatted and the ones that are broken would be put onto this belt. Because this belt, sometimes formatting fails and you get a broken data card out. Sometimes it works and you get a good data, a blank data card out. And then up here we could filter them out. The black, broken ones would go in here to be recycled and the good ones would be passed up here to go around the system again. So, yeah, the theory is good but in the, the but there was an un unforeseen circumstance in there, should we say? So that's going to need. I'm going to need to go in there and, and fix that with the with the with the large hammer. However, as you saw, that is basic sort of working. We are making we are making these data cards. Look at those are purpley blue. I thought they were black. That's interesting. Um, we are making these we are making these science packs. It is sort of working. Progress has been made. <laughs> The next thing I had to play around with is over in, on Gear Often. I fixed up a load of the stuff here that was broken. So um, the, we, need, we needed we needed power for Gear Often because there was there was no beam system to be firing at, at, at this planet. So I went to Kalidus Orbit and I put in some extra beam emitters here. We've got this one for charging up spaceships, which is currently not in use because none of the spaceships are parked there. But that's fine. Got this one now is going to Gear Often, and I've got another one that's spare for. For later use, should we say? So when I when I realise this, when I put out another another um, beam receiver somewhere on a random planet, we'll start using that one as well. And that this is all working nicely. And I went in and fixed the uh, these these pylons were in the wrong place. I had to move them one square over to the, or one solar panels worth over to the right so they'd actually link in with these. And that's why there's a few here that are unpowered. But there's plenty of power here, as you can see. We've got. 19.6 gigawatts being generated and we're only using 17 gigawatts of it so yeah happy we're happy with that that's working nicely the next thing is actually this is this is going looping around a little bit and going back to something i was talking about a moment ago um with all of this deep space science going now we're using quite a lot of naquium so that means there's no longer enough of it being produced so what I've, so what i've done in order to get around this the first thing i did was i made another one of these these ships and this is the one that's taking the naquitite ore from um, from Norvis orbit over to Tulip to be processed into Naquium and then bringing the Naquium back. And that quite quickly got through the um, the supply of Naquitite I had available here and brought some of the some of it over. Um, but it's not enough. There's only 36 in this warehouse and we need like 400 for a train to come over and actually pick it up. So that's stalled. So I then made a second one of the really long ships, the one I was complaining about before, that goes in here. And that's the one that does the really long run from Norvis orbit all the way out to Realm of Shadows. 
and that's the one that's powered by that beam gen beam emitter that I was talking about earlier. And so having with two of those, it's it's still not quite enough um, because they're um, they're still blooming miles away. If we look on the interstellar map, you see one of them's one of them's about halfway back, and the second one is broken for some reason, and I'm not quite sure what's wrong with this one. We'll have a look at that in a moment, um, but I don't think I'm going to solve it because I don't know why it's failing. So this has been there's been a number of a number of steps in this. I've also been out to Realm of Shadows. And I've fixed up some of the problems we had here. So um, I've put in these water tanks. There's now these will now buffer the water that's produced by the uh, by the steam system, um, by the power generation. Keep that running nicely, um, and act, act, act as a buffer to allow the allow the system to, to to not overflow as you saw it was doing earlier. So that's going to work quite well. We've got this transmitter in here that's telling that's t oh, sorry that, that's a receiver. That's controlling these belts in here and setting them to go and pass the um, the data cards through whenever there aren't enough at the other end. So that's going to keep the um, the spaceship the, the, the spaceships that are travelling back and forth loaded with appropriate numbers of data cards to keep all of that working and to keep it keeps to keep that happy. So this whole system is now is now pretty happy. I'm, I'm happy with this. This I, th I believe this is all working well and doing doing what it's supposed to. The um, exception to that is this ship here, the Aquifier 2. This is a new ship I've made and I don't know what's going on here. <clears throat> so we have the engines haven't started up for some reason. They've got fuel, we've got plenty of power available. As you can see there's, there's production available of a gigawatt and we're using 4.7 megawatts of it. So there's plenty of power available for the engines to kick in. There's lots of heat in this, there's enough for this to be running. We've got the hot steam here, we've got, we've got steam in We've got no steam in here. We've got water in here. Everything, everything here is fine. This all looks good to me. Here we've got it set to be trying to go to Norvis orbit, and it thinks it's going, but for some reason it's not. Um, everything here seems, as far as I can tell, is okay. And if I click stop and then engage, the engines all kick in, except for that one, which isn't wired in properly. But that's a that's a known problem. I I, 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 I I've just need to put in a pile on there to deal with it. So if I click stop and then start, then the engines kick in. But for some reason, when it automatically takes off, the engines don't kick in. And I don't know what's going on there. So there's something very strange happening there. Um, answers in the comments if you know what's going on here, because I I do not. And I couldn't solve it in the last sort of half hour of my stream. So something very strange is happening there, and I want to know why and what. And just, just, just generally, I just want this to work. I'm going to say finally for the next thing I'm going to talk about, because I think it's probably finally, but I could be wrong and I may end up thinking of something else to talk about as well, but we shall see. <laughs> oh no, I've already thought of something else. Right, so yeah, the next thing I did was I came over to Tulip, and this is something I've been saying I needed to do. So I need to put in a second one of these high temperature heat exchangers, because it turns out that these provide twice as much power as these do. So you need two of these to one of these in order to keep it balanced. And when the... Um, when the... Uh, core mining drills kick in that uses a huge amount of power and that was ripping through a lot more than the uh, system was capable of, of producing so if you look if you look along here you can see these um these flat patches in the um in the turbine generators generation uh that's where it was trying to produce too much so there's a spike initially while it works through the steam that's already generated in it but then and then it just drops this flat area and we're not we're not producing enough power and that's why we've got all these fl and um and and these flat tops as you, as you may may be aware always tend to mean that you've got problems with your power generation then here I came along and I fixed it so now we've got these spikes and the spikes are happy to just go up and stay up and so that that's sorted out now um we're now we've now got plenty of power available on tulip it's just all running a bit slowly because we've got all of the vitamin lounge we need already so these these drills have cut out because the vitamin lounge is being used at almost no rate at all and we're very and uh, because we're not bringing in any aqua and we're not getting through the vitalic acid here as well so basically this 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 area has gone to sleep because we've got enough stuff everything is everything is happy ha not however not everything in the in the entire system is happy if we nip over to Myokin for a moment we'll find out that we find there's a train here that has run out of fuel um, and this is blooming stupid that shouldn't happen but it turns out what happened over here is we had um, this is this this is the station that it goes to and it's supposed to fuel up while it's in this station because this train goes from depot to whatever mine it needs to get it wants to, to it is, has some stuff available probably typically here and then comes around here to dump the um, dump the vulcanite out and so I thought well it's always going to go here and I've got the vulcanite quite close by let's fuel up here so that was it was doing that and it was working fine working absolutely perfectly but then an asteroid uh, slipped through the defenses blew up something around here I think probably the, the railway here either got repaired or got replaced. I don't know which. Um, but this piece of underground belt had been destroyed. Um, 
there was then another pair of undergrounds going through here so I went in and I, um, I, I demolished those and put this bit of belt in instead in order to get that bit back so that fixed that but now this bit's broken um, I was thinking well I'll just I'll just harvest a little bit of belt from somewhere where it's not being used like um, these little bits here there's, there's enough little bits like this around that I reckon I could get enough together to fix that however the train here is still going to be stuck so I'm going to need to go out there anyway and fix it so I haven't bothered yet um, I'm just going to need to go out and get this sorted dump some fuel into there manually and then everything will be okay I don't know if construction bots can do that I wonder if construction bots can put fuel into trains. That's something I'll have to have a look into and think and see, see if I can. Because then if I can do that, then I don't need to come out here. And that just saves so much time. We shall see. Um, so that's near, that's pretty much everything. I did have another minor issue down on Norvis where another one of my trains got cut in half by a spaceship taking off. So I went in and uh, put in all the wiring and stuff for it so that won't happen again. There's an um, explanation of why that happened and what I did to fix it in one of the earlier videos. But essentially I, I, went, I, I came down here, fixed the train up and just sent it on its merry way and then that, that, that sorted that out. So that's... Um, that's that's not that's now work. I think that's now working. I've, I've, I've fixed most of the spaceships. I will just basically I'll just wait and see. If any more of them break, then I'll I'll, I'll go in and sort them out separately. But for now, I think it's probably all right. So in the next stream, do come along on um, Wednesday next week to uh, to see what I'm, or on Wednesday in fact to uh, to to, um, to watch. I've because I've got quite quite a lot of things to do. Obviously, top of the list is I want to carry on working towards Deep Space Science 2, because that's the big push. That's what this, this whole playthrough is all about, doing the sciences. Um, but in order, to, in order to do that, there's a few other things I need to do first. Like, I need to bring up that oil from Asalia I was talking about earlier, so that, that's probably going to be the first thing I do. Fixing that, that train that's out of fuel on Myokin, I need to do that as well. I might do, try and just do that as quickly as I can, get that done with first, because it's going to be quick and easy. Um, when I've got that oil up there, then hopefully I'll have enough ion stream for the deep space science to be uh, produced. We'll have to, we'll uh, we'll see about that. We'll see how that goes. <coughs> I need to sort out that spaceship's engines aren't in, um, aren't engaging because I don't know what's going on there, but that's that's annoying. It needs to be fixed. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll we shall have to see. And I've got a shortage of uranium, so I've been looking at the error messages that have been popping up here, and most of them I don't really care about. But there's there's complaints about a lack. of a lack of uranium coming through here and that I think may well become a problem so I need I'm gonna I think I'm probably gonna head out to um, uh, asteroid belt one it turns out so Kalidas asteroid belt one has this big patch of uranium here that's 5.3 million that's a decent chunk of uranium so I think what I'll probably do and th there's no there's no more no more of it here there's just that one chunk of uranium great um, but 5.3 million is quite a lot. That'll last me a while. So what I'm thinking of doing is basically setting up the same sort of system I have for the um, for the Naquitite, but coming out here and it's not going to need to be as fast a ship. It's just going to come out here. It's going to bring the sulphur and the iron with it. It's probably going to have to bring ice with it as well because there's no um, there's no water around here as I can see. Uh, so we'll bring that out and we'll probably might as well do that. Actually we don't need to do the heat heat system. We can do we can do we can just set one up here and uh, to, to receive it. But I might do it anyway just because it's a an entertaining way to do it. Um, so we'll set up a very very similar system here and mine mine out the uranium, take that back to Norvis and and process that there. So it's, it's somewhere else I can get uranium from and then I can keep looking for more places in the future when once I once I eventually use this patch up because it probably won't last forever. So that's the plans for next time. Um, Come along and uh, come along and watch, and you can and heckle and, and and provide advice and that sort of thing. We'll see how it goes. Also, there's there's Monday night streams. Um, this Monday, uh, which should be tomorrow when this video goes out, I won't actually be doing a. I won't be joining the Minecraft stream because I'm uh, I'm going away, having a weekend away, um, so I, I won't be around. Um, but everyone else will still be playing. So if you want to go along to Al's um, Al's stream and watch that until for for, that, for next week. Uh, Feel, do, do please do. Uh, I'll be back the Monday after and, uh, and streaming as normal then. So please come along then. It'd be great to see all of you along there. And otherwise, well, we'll have all these videos, these summary videos coming out of the weekends and, and uh, GTA videos coming out during the week as well. So as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one and we'll see what I can get done. See you then.